guys, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a two and a half year old toddler named Kylie and I also have a six month old baby named Mia. There have been so many of you guys who have commented over the last year or so, specifically on our family vlogs, about how well developed Kylie's speech is. That's my toddler. And to be totally honest, Kylie's my first child. I don't really have a frame of reference for whether or not her speech is advanced or if it's completely average. However, I know that many of you guys have children that are Kylie's age, so perhaps that's where some of those comments are stemming from. So I am certainly not saying that my toddler has advanced speech patterns or anything like that. But I do know that out of all of my video requests from you guys, the number one request that I get is for me to do a video on how I've helped Kylie develop her speech. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I've done anything super special or out of the ordinary, but I do feel like I want to share with you guys kind of some of the things that I have been doing with her since she was a baby in the event that maybe some of these tips might help you guys too. So from one busy parent to another, today I'd like to share with you guys a couple of my own tips for helping your child develop their their oral language skills from a Montessori perspective. The first thing that I want to reiterate again is please do not compare your child to other children. All kids develop at a unique pace, so if you're sitting around comparing your child to other children their age and starting to worry, it's completely unnecessary. You're just adding more stress to your plate that you don't need as a parent. The best thing that you can do is check in with your pediatrician periodically just to make sure that their language development is otherwise on track. And if your pediatrician expresses any concerns, then you can work with him or her one-on-one -on -one to come up with some solutions for your child. But there are plenty of things that you can be doing right now at home to help foster your child's language development. What you need to realize is that children acquire language through direct exposure. If they are not interacting with you face to face and hearing all of the language that's going on around them and seeing your mouth moving as you're speaking to them, it's going to be a lot harder for them to acquire those words. That is one of the reasons that educational TV shows and apps and things like that that purport to teach babies language language don't actually work. At an older age where children are able to understand the concept of what a TV show or an app is offering, maybe, but for babies and young toddlers, it simply just doesn't work like that. So the best thing that you can do is focus on providing your child with rich oral language experiences at every opportunity. And that brings me into my five tips for you. So my first tip is to make sure that you are reading, reciting poetry, and singing with your child every single day. And you should be doing this from birth. You might think it's silly to be reading or singing to a baby that doesn't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth yet, but the operative word there is yet. Eventually, they are going to begin understanding, and it's not very easy to pinpoint exactly at which point that moment of understanding happens. So if you're doing it from the beginning, then you're going to be ensuring for yourself that you're not going to miss that golden window of time. By reading books to your child every day, you're exposing them to so much more language than they would normally hear in everyday normal conversation. This means that you can be reading books to your child that some people might even consider not age appropriate, that's okay. And as I've mentioned in other videos like my children's book recommendations, you want to be choosing books that are based in reality as often as you can. And when it comes to language development, that does become really important because you're now providing them with all of the vocabulary that they need to describe the things that they're seeing around them every day. As far as reciting poetry and singing goes, that kind of sing-songy rhyming pattern that comes along with that type of language is actually super helpful in your baby developing something called phonemic awareness, which is their awareness of the different sounds of letters. You don't have to spend the entire day reading and singing to your baby. That would just be overkill. Everything in moderation is usually the best way to go. But what I would advise is to make sure that you're reading books and singing songs at least once a day with your baby. The more that you can do this, the better off your child is going to be. But I do understand that there are very busy working parents out there too. And sometimes your only opportunity for this with your child is in the evenings during bedtime. And that's why incorporating a bedtime story is probably one of the easiest ways to go about this. My second tip is to use simple and direct language with your baby or toddler as often as you can. When children start learning words for things, they might often substitute their own baby words. 
For example, they might say Wawa for water. And it's extremely important that while you recognize that Wawa for your child means water, anytime you want to talk about water with your child, you're not using their word for it. You're going to use the actual word, water. So for example, if your child is thirsty and they point to their cup of water and say Wawa, you're not gonna say, oh, you want your Wawa? Here you go. Instead, you want to use simple direct language that uses the real words for things and say something like, Oh, you're thirsty. Would you like a sip of your water? This way your baby is being exposed to the correct pronunciation for that word every single time. And while they might continue to use the word Wawa for a while, eventually they're going to pick up on it and start using the correct word, water. You also want to use real words to describe everything that you're talking about with your child or anything that they see. Oftentimes people feel like babies and toddlers are too young to understand words that are a little bit long. So for example, if you were out on a stroller ride with your baby during the day and you see somebody walking a golden retriever on the other side of the street. Your baby happens to notice and points and says dog or some sound that means dog. And a lot of the times parents will say, yeah, a dog, I see. But there's nothing wrong with saying, yes, I see that lady's walking a golden retriever. Babies and toddlers are not too young to pick up on these small differences. And I think you'd be delightfully surprised to know that eventually one day your child is going to see a dog like that out on the street and instead of pointing and saying dog, they're going to point and say, look mommy, golden retriever. I personally have experienced this exact situation with my toddler many times, which is why I'm telling you this. Don't assume your child is too young for the real words. Another way to take advantage of your child hearing simple direct language throughout the day is to talk about them with everything, especially during caretaking tasks. Often these are some of the few times during your day that you're going to be 100% solely focused on your baby or toddler. So if you can talk to them about everything that you're doing while you're doing it in very simple language, they're going to benefit from that. If you're changing your child's diaper, you might say, okay, we're gonna lift your legs now. Okay, we're sliding the diaper underneath your bottom. Here, can you help me with the tabs? Or if you're dressing your child, you might say, okay, let's put your right arm in. Okay, now your left arm. This also applies to other simple everyday caretaking tasks like meal times with your child or when you're giving them a bath or helping them to learn how to use the restroom. And one last thing that I'd like to mention when it comes to simple direct language is with older toddlers, don't be afraid to kind of explain the rules of language to them just in everyday conversation. Anytime I introduce a new word to my toddler that I know she's never heard before, before, I will often tell her that's another word for blank. So for example, I used the word drowsy with her in conversation the other day and she immediately parroted the word back to me but I could tell she didn't understand what it meant. So I said to her, drowsy is another word for tired. And then she parroted that back to me and before I knew it, she was using the word drowsy correctly. You can also explain certain mechanics of language to your child, like the correct use of the words he and she. For a while, my toddler was confusing what the two of the men and would point to my husband and say she, or point to her little sister and say he. And finally, it occurred to me one day that I hadn't really explained to her which one was which. So I sat down with her one day and I explained, she is for girls and when you want to say he, we should be referring to a boy or a man. And then I gave her an example. I said, daddy is a he. We would say, he is home from work. And Mia, her little sister, is a girl. So we would say, she is hungry. After I had that conversation with her, she slowly picked up on it and started using the word correctly. So again, this is kind of like another case of not assuming that they're too young to understand these things. My third tip for you is to give them time to get their words out. Be patient. Don't rush in right away to end their sentence for them when it looks like they're struggling for the word that they're trying to think of. You have to keep in mind that babies and toddlers are learning these words. So sometimes they have to kind of recall what word it is that they're trying to say. And it takes them a few moments to get that word from their brain to their mouths and out to express it to you. And oftentimes when parents see their child struggling for a word and they can already tell what word it is they're trying to get to, they'll rush in and say, oh, oh, do you want your ball? When in reality, if you had given them just a couple of extra seconds, they might have come up with the word ball on their own. This one in particular is something that I struggle with personally every single day because as you guys know, I'm a very fast speaker 
speaker. That's just the way that I've always been. And so I want to rush in and give her the words that she needs. So I have to consciously remind myself to just kind of bite my tongue and not say anything for a few seconds and see if she's able to come up with the words on her own. My fourth tip for you is to avoid baby talk. Now this is kind of tied into number two with using simple direct language, but this is kind of its own category because parents just by nature tend to talk in a very high pitched, excitable voice with their babies. And that's normal. And that's actually been proven that babies tend to listen to those high pitched tones and really take it in a lot better than they do with just a normal tone of voice. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with baby talking to your children. I know that I do it with my babies when they're very young, it's natural. But what I am trying to stress to you is try to avoid baby talking as your primary means of communication with your baby or toddler. You do not need to be in their face constantly saying little silly things like, oh, you're so cute. Oh, look at you go. Look at those tiny little toes. Or, oh, are you thirsty? Do you want your wawa? I think you guys kind of get the idea. Instead, as much as it's appropriate, use real language. Like you would talk to another person, especially as your baby starts getting a little bit older. You can say simple things like, oh, you fell down and hurt yourself. Are you okay? Let me help you up. Or, oh, you're thirsty? Would you like something to drink? Again, it's all about providing them with exposure to the language that we want them to be using. My fifth and final tip for you is something that's more activity-based that you can use to help enhance their language skills from very early on. And that is the use of language objects. Now there are actual sets of language objects which are just little miniature figurines of everyday common things from teacups to barns to little animals and vehicles. You can buy sets of these language objects from Montessori Supply Services. I will link one down below that I've been looking at personally myself if you're interested. But you can also use everyday things from around your house like wooden spoons and whisks and vegetable scrubbers from the kitchen or hairbrushes and toothbrushes and toothpaste from the bathroom. As soon as your child gains the ability to pick up and hold objects, you can start creating treasure baskets for him or her that basically just contain little groupings of items from these different categories for them to explore. And while it is important to give them some uninterrupted independent playtime exploring these objects, there is nothing wrong with also sitting down with them sometimes and providing names for the objects that they're holding. Like, this is a whisk, whisk as they're playing with it. Between the ages of one and two, you can start playing matching games with these objects with your child. So as long as you have two of each object, you can have them match the objects together. And as they're making that match, you can say the word for them until they learn it themselves. And while it's important to start with realia, so like the real actual objects, once your child gets a little bit older, kind of into middle toddlerhood, older toddlers, and then eventually preschool, you can transition from using the real objects to pictures of those objects objects on cards. You can also use a three period lesson with these language baskets with your child to help teach them the vocabulary for all of the objects that are in the basket. So say for example, you had a little basket of three fruits, an apple, an orange, and a banana. You would pick up the apple and say, this is an apple, this is an orange, this is a banana. That's period one. Once you've done that enough times and you think they might have an understanding of what the words are, or maybe you've heard them using some of the words, you can move on to period two then and say, can you show me the apple? And they should point to the apple in the basket. Or can you show me a banana? And they should point to the banana. You're going to want to spend the most time in period two. This is kind of the practice stage for them. But once you feel like they've kind of mastered that stage, then it's appropriate to move on to period three, where you're kind of quizzing them or testing them at that point and you'll point to a fruit in the basket and say what is this and they should say apple or what is this fruit and they would say banana if you want a little bit more of an explanation and an actual demonstration of how a three period lesson is used then i did a video on that when i introduced how to do sandpaper letters with your child and i will link that video for you guys to check out what's interesting is that as parents i think a lot of us naturally use a three period lesson for things like teaching your child the names of the different body parts without even realizing it if you think about it a lot of parents when they first start interacting with their babies and hoping that they'll learn the names of body parts they'll look at their face and say these are your eyes this is your nose oh here's your ears and that's actually period one of a three period lesson then they get to the part where they say where's your nose and the child points to their nose or can you show me where your mouth is and the child points to their mouth that's period two and then when you get to the point where you're pointing to your child's body parts and saying what's this 
or what are these? And they're saying nose and eyes. That's period three. And you don't have to do this just with body parts. You can do this with all kinds of things around your house during everyday life. So if you're carrying your baby around kind of while you're making a snack or something in the kitchen and you need to go over and rip off a paper towel, you can just say, these are paper towels and rip one off let them touch it. Eventually you'll have done this enough times that you'll be able to say, hey, where are the paper towels? And you'll notice that your baby points exactly to where the paper towels are and they've acquired that word. So one final bonus tip that I have for you, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it in this video because there's just so much information to know about it that I could honestly make an entire video on it and maybe I will in the future, but using baby sign language with your child before they are verbal is incredibly helpful. Not just for avoiding tantrums and meltdowns, because you're giving them a way to express themselves before they have the word for it. But they're also discovering lots of vocabulary that way from a very early age. So those are my tips for language development from a Montessori perspective. If you guys have any questions about something that I've mentioned in this video today, then please be sure to leave me a comment down below and I'd love to chat with you guys about it. If you like today's video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, I just wanted to let you know that this video is part of a larger series called Montessori at Home which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning more about, then you might consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.